Hi guys, welcome to Angel Speaks. Today, um, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to cope after leaving an abusive, toxic relationship. Um, you're going to go through a lot of things, and I'm going to get into that, and then I'm going to get into how to cope with it to, um, you know, make it a little easier. It's not going to make it easy, but it's definitely going to help, so I'm going to um, talk about that. How to cope after you leave. First of all, after you leave someone that's very toxic, um, you're going to be feeling um, a lot of um, hurt in different ways. You're going to feel very unworthy of love, very um, bitter. You're going to feel like you're going crazy. Um, you're going to feel guilty like it was all your maybe it was your fault maybe it wasn't you're going to be feeling all these things or maybe you're going to beat yourself up a little bit about it and um and that's going to really make you suffer more but it, it's it's a part of it you can't I, i'm going to say that i think that that's there's no other way around it you're just going to beat yourself up over it because when you've gone through toxic relationship when you've gone through abuse for so long um you're going to feel a little responsible for it sometimes. You're going to feel like it was all my fault for letting myself go through it. You know, um, I, you know, why did I do this? I shouldn't. I was so stupid. You might call yourself names. <sighs> it's going to happen and it sucks. But um, I want you to know it wasn't your fault. Um, you were naive. You, you wanted to believe the best in that person and you chose to love them. And um, even if they hurt you, you wanted to see the best in it. And, um, you know, don't beat yourself over it. Let yourself know. You didn't know. You didn't know any better. You thought he was going to change. Um, now you know. But um, try to be compassionate to yourself. Um, try to forgive yourself. You know, reason with yourself. When, when you are coping with the aftermath, a lot of times you need to talk to yourself. And it sounds bad. It sounds crazy. But you have to um, have little pep talks with yourself often and um, you're going to relive everything that you went through. Um, what happens is um, you're going to be in shock. You're going to go through a time um, of feeling in shock that you went through all that, that they did all those things to hurt you and that um, you changed a lot of yourself. You, you're not the same person. Um, you're going to feel so out of yourself. It's, it's all your body's way of adjusting to what just happened to you. You went through a, um, a very harmful relationship. You know, it was very harmful to your mental and emotional state. And you're in shock right now because the body is still getting over what what happened to you it's still um not knowing that it's free from it because it needs to go through this healing thing first and so you're going to be very um you're going to be in almost like this twilight zone feeling <clears throat> you're going to feel like you're going crazy um you're going to feel you're going to be anxious you're going to feel fear you're going to feel like Nobody's ever going to want you again. You're going to believe that you are not worthy because when you were in that relationship, you were brainwashed. When you're listening to constant put downs, when you're constantly being lied to, you're constantly, your whole world gets out of touch with reality. And right now, after you leave that toxic environment, Finally, your brain is adjusting to it and it doesn't know what's real and what's not. It's like it was so used to that toxicness. Now that you're out of it, it's confused. It's like it's it's afraid of the unknown and it's afraid. You're going to be in despair. You're going to cry a lot. You're going to be angry at times. You're going to want to talk to someone about it. And, and, and if you have someone to talk to, great. If they're very compassionate towards you and they understand what you're going through that's going to help you but if they don't understand because they weren't in the same situation it's going to be very hard and you're going to feel more alone so the best thing to cope with that is to seek outside support go online 
find um, websites that you know that targets what you're going through and you're gonna find other people also going through the same thing they're gonna you're gonna share stories with them um, do look up narcissistic abuse recovery on Facebook and things of that nature and and even just on Google you're gonna find different things and you're gonna be able to even talk with people and they're gonna help you heal because um, you're not gonna feel alone you're gonna be a little comforted that this is something that's normal that happens to a lot of people and you're gonna get through and you're gonna hear other people yeah you know I'm, I'm feeling better now and it's gonna make you feel better um, another thing that you're gonna go through is a, a feeling of withdrawal um, because of the chemical reactions in your brain that became addicted to the intense emotions that you constantly felt when you were in that relationship your body is gonna feel like you need that person so you're gonna feel withdrawal you're gonna feel like you need them like you can't live without them but this will pass and it will go away I promise you that but you're gonna feel this for for some time you're gonna feel like you just wanna call them and tell them that you miss them you're gonna wanna just call them and, and say I can't believe you hurt me you want them to feel what you're feeling so you're gonna want to tell them what you're going through but please don't do that the best thing to do is to cut off ties. Please do not contact them. Don't tell them what you're going through because they were the one who hurt you for a long time. So they enjoyed, they got a kick out of hurting you. And so if you call them and tell them what you're feeling right now, that's going to boost their ego. Even if they act like it's not making them feel good inside, they're going to feel good because they're going to feel like they're having an impact and they're going to feel like, oh, it sounds like I can get that control again. She's coming to me. Even though I'm the one that hurt her, she's coming to me for rescuing by telling me what she's going through. And it makes no sense, but um, it's it's a natural thing. You're not crazy. Um, he's not worthy of your love just because you want to go and because you miss him and you want to tell him how you feel. It's just you're addicted to this person because of those chemicals in your brain that got addicted to the intense emotions that this person provided you um, and even though it was a very unhealthy thing um, the body does not recognize if those things were good or not it just rec it recognizes the intensity so you are addicted to this person that is very unhealthy to you um, so you have to realize that um, you're gonna want them sometimes you're gonna want to cuss them out or whatever but it's not going to do any good and it's only going to open yourself up to be abused more because now they see that they're going to have an upper hand and they're going to play with that um, another thing is you have to accept what happened you have to talk to yourself and say look we can't turn back time we made mistakes that brought us to where we are now we made decisions that wasn't healthy for us but it's, it, it happened we didn't know any better we didn't know it would bring us to this point and we're gonna be okay and I forgive you for doing that you gotta tell yourself that you forgive yourself and tell yourself it's okay you didn't know this was gonna happen you thought it was gonna be something better don't beat yourself up because that's gonna make you suffer more another thing you have to do which is gonna be very hard is you have to forgive the person that hurt you many times that's gonna be a very big process in itself and I'm gonna do a video that talks about how to forgive someone because that is not an easy thing and it's not something simple so I want to talk about how to forgive somebody um, but um, forgiveness is going to be the key component to you healing and getting over them um, you have to try to put yourself in their shoes why they um, were so abusive and hurtful and um, because you have to learn that it wasn't about you and you gotta try not to take it personal um, people that are toxic and abusive they're that way because of who they are whether they learned it growing up or or somehow they saw something that wasn't healthy for them to see but they talked themselves into believing that that was okay and it was it was normal and so now they adopted this new belief that that's okay to be that way. Um, whatever the case is, it's good for you to understand it and to, to get out of that victim mentality. Put yourself in their shoes. Why are they this way? Why did they do this to me? Okay, 
because they are a human being that was hurt at some point in their life and they chose that this was the way to go. Um, thinking that way helps helps you to forgive easily. It helps it to happen. It helps you to be um, more forgiving because you're able to get make it not be about you. Um, if you constantly see yourself as a victim, you, you're not going to be able to forgive. Um, that victim mentality is also an addictive thing, and I'm also gonna I'm gonna devote a video to that as well. But um, you need to get to that point that you can forgive them, um, and that is gonna be what makes you heal. If you can't forgive them, I promise you, this is something that's not really gonna um, heal properly, and it's gonna cause you to make more mistakes in life with um, your partners. Take responsibility for your actions and your decisions. Um, don't play the blame game so much. Oh, this person was so evil. They did so much to hurt me. Take some responsibility. There were some signs and red flags in the beginning of the relationship that you ignored. Even if you didn't know it was going to be this crazy, you still, they were there. You had that good instinct that said, don't do it. This person might not be right for you. And you ignored it. You so take some responsibility and give yourself for that as well. Um, use this experience as a learning, as a learning, use this as a learning experience for you. Um, um, think of all the things that you did to this person out of revenge because they hurt you so much so you did this. Um, you know, how could you have reacted in a better way? Whatever the case, they could have done something like cheated on you and you did all this stuff to get them back um but um and in doing that that caused more consequences so just think of those things that you did that could have been avoided because um even if someone does something to you it doesn't mean you need to react you don't have to react and, and pay them back all right so think about that and, and just you know this will help you become a better person for the next relationship and so you know try to think of ways that how could i have what, how could I have reacted to that in a, in a more healthier way? You know, and this will give yourself, um, it'll take yourself out of that victim mode too. And it'll help you to grow. So that now, you know, if, if someone did something to you, you don't have to react in a certain way. All right. Um, so speak positive and think positive. Negativity is going to stop the healing process. So the longer you're negative, talking negative, thinking negative, it's going to slow that healing process down, okay? Um, and I, the last thing I want to kind of go through is um, you're going to form, depending on how bad the relationship was and how bad it messed you up, you're going to go through a form of PTSD. Um, that's right. Um, this is something that when your body experiences things that were traumatic to your well-being and it put it in a certain shock, and now you're gonna, you have, um, your body goes through these symptoms um, because it's still trying to get over what it went through. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, veterans that were fought in a war saw people get blown up. That is, that traumatized them. So they're gonna go come back home as a different person. They're gonna go through symptoms um, that um, any little thing will trigger and bring that memory back that traumatized them. So they're going to be um, on their toes and stuff. So, And I want you to know that if you were in a traumatic relationship or toxic relationship, it caused harm to you. You're going to leave it, and you're going to have symptoms of P like PTSD. It's a form of PTSD. Um, you may be watching TV, and you may there may be a, a scene on TV where someone's kissing, and it will shock your body that you'll actually be looking for the remote and your body will feel so I have to rape and change this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And you'll feel so like panicked. Um, and it's not, it's, it's a totally different thing from when you're, you leave a healthy relationship and you just miss them. And when you see someone kissing, you think of that person and go, Oh, it makes me miss them. Well, when you leave a toxic relationship, you're not going to get that reaction. Um, you're going to get a very panicked reaction because it's going to bring back, it's going to bring you back to a time in your life that was very harmful to you. 
So um, you might get that reaction and you're going to be confused and you're going to say, why did I react that way when, when I saw that? What's wrong with me? And you're going to even feel, you're going to feel crazy. There's going to be different things that's going to trigger you. Another thing, you're going to fear out of nowhere. Um, you know, I, when I experienced these things, sometimes I, I, I just felt I didn't know what was wrong. I said, everything's fine. Why am I feeling this way? And I had to just leave my house and drive far and keep driving. And I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I had to get out get out somewhere go somewhere to stop feeling this way um, this is um, the state of panic your body has memories your body will um, remind you that it remembers that bad things happen to it when you go through shock when you go through fear constantly on your toes you're constantly dreading what's gonna happen next your body remembers everything that the emotions put it through when your when your emotions are going out of whack the body gets into a state of shock your body might shake your body might feel very uneasy and um so when you're not in that no more the body still has those memories and it's going to um take some time to realize it's not in that situation anymore so you actually a good thing to cope through that is to talk to your body let your body know say listen we're not there anymore we survived it we're okay now everything's gonna be okay I know you're still thinking that we're not safe but we are safe now I'm protecting you you have to talk to yourself that way and I, I promise you it's gonna help you um, it's gonna help you to know you're not going crazy you're not bipolar now all of a sudden your body just needs to um, be comforted to know that it's not in that dangerous situation anymore. Um, you know, uh, even if you weren't being physically abused all the time or whatever, maybe it was just a mental and, and emotional abuse, that is just as traumatic as being beat up all the time. It really is, I promise you. Emotional and mental abuse is just as harmful, and you are going to experience, well, you may experience these things and when your body feels afraid and panicked and, and certain things will trigger you and you'll be angry and you'll start to cry you need to you know cry it out let yourself know this is going to pass these are just emotions that, is, that are coming because you need to get over what happened and it's going to take time you're going to get through it it's going to take time though and you need to talk to your body and let it know it's going to be okay. And as time goes on, your, your body's going to believe you and you're going to start to, those symptoms are going to start to go away little by little. Okay. Um, another thing that I would recommend is to pray. Praying really helped for me. Um, I, you know, God hears your prayers and he's going to help you, but you need to open your mouth and speak it out. And ask him, say, God, I can't, I don't want to go through this anymore. Please help me. Please take these feelings away. Help me to heal. Help me to forgive. Help me to do what I need to do to get past this. And if you pray that every day, I promise you, he's going to give you that strength. And little by little, you're going to wake up one day and say, hold up. A whole week passed or two whole weeks passed and I'm feeling fine. This means I'm healing, you know, and, um, you're going to get past it. Um, you know, so remind yourself that you went through something and it's going to take time. If you downgrade what you went through, you're going to slow that healing process down. If you say, oh my God, stop being crazy. Stop feeling this way. We didn't, we weren't beat all the time. That person didn't abuse us that bad. They didn't treat us that bad. If you talk to yourself that way, you're going to make yourself suffer because you're invalidating yourself and if you talk to others and they invalidate what you went through and say you're fine just don't think about it don't talk to people that are going to talk to you that way what you went through was serious and that's why you needed to go look up google how do i leave this person because it's that serious don't belittle yourself and what you're feeling and don't talk to others that don't understand what you're going through because they will unintentionally invalidate what you're going through because they can't relate. And don't be mad at them. Just know that if they didn't go through what you went through, there's no way that they could really understand it. 
they can't really empathize too much with it because there's no relation there. So that's why it's important to reach out to people that went through the same things you did. And so that way you guys will be on the same page. You know you're not alone and you know that um you're going to get through it. You know, you're not going crazy. This is totally natural and normal and you're going to get through it. It's going to take time. And it, and how long it takes you to heal depends on you as a person, depends on how quickly you are able to forgive. It depends on um, your support system. It depends on how long you were with this person. It's going to depend on a lot of things. Um, so I can't tell you it's going to take three months exactly, or it's going to take five years. I can't tell you that. Every situation is different. Everyone's different. Just because one person took three years to get over it, it doesn't mean you're going to take three years to get over it. So, um, you know, there's no exact date of healing, but um, it's going to be a process and know that you're going to get through it. And um, when you do get through it, you're going to love yourself so much more. You're going to respect yourself more. You're going to trust yourself more and you're going to be proud of yourself. You're going to be stronger and you're going to become a better person because of it. If you're able to heal properly. Um, so yeah, um, and I'm going to get into in, in another video, I'm going to talk about how to forgive. Why is it so important to forgive? Why does forgiveness cause you to heal? Um, forgiveness is going to help you also help you to stop making the same mistakes over and over. You're going to stop, um, meeting the same type of people when you're able to forgive and i'm going to tell you why so that's going to be in the video that talks about forgiveness okay thank you for listening have a nice day